Oh, hello. Welcome. We did it. We did it and we are live. So welcome to our first Truth Bomb Tuesday with Yay. Cara and Sarah Jane. Yay, we got the technology to work. So um, awesome. yeah, that's great. Absolutely great. And while we're just waiting for some of you to come in and join us, let us know what you'd like uh, for us to discuss for our topics going forward. And yeah, um, okay. get the show on the road. So, that's all that see. stuff up behind you, Sarah Jane. All those boxers. Uh, uh, my husband is an avid uh, toy connector. Yippee! Hi, Sue. Hi, Tony. Nice to see you here. Let us know what's going on in your life and what you'd like to discuss. So I'm still trying to figure out how this all works. So let's see. What's going on? Cryptocurrency all the way, says Tony Tate. Tony, we'll have to do a show, um, especially all about that and how to create our, your own economy, which is all about service. And um, let us know. Let us know if you're tuning in now or if you're watching, going to watch this on the replay. What would you like for us to discuss? Renewable energy, says Tony. Um, how do I show people's... Okay comments this is quite fun this is a new uh, platform called be live and we're still finding our way so sue any questions if you have any questions let us know what you'd like like us to talk about and in the meantime cara why don't you just introduce yourself to to everybody so that they know who you are and and a little bit about why we decided to do this <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, so I'm Dr. Kara Gubbins, and I have a business um, with a lot of names, actually, and they all kind of reflect different aspects of what I do. So a spiritual tale is kind of my talking to animals and, and um, helping connect people to animals part of it. The Awakened Soul is my people part of it, where I help people like come into higher consciousness and clear whatever's holding them back or blocking them from living the life that they want to live. And one of the biggest things in my world is the animal wisdom circle where we meet each month to talk to the animals and um, get some spiritual guidance for ourselves. And we also get to see what it's like to be that animal, which is something I've been doing since I was like this big, you know, just like, what's it like to be a dolphin? I want to, you know, walk around like a tiger and, um, and so this is a place where we do that. And how we came to this point was that I um, interview a guest expert every month as part of my animal wisdom circle. And Sarah Jane was my guest again this month, um, two years ago. I think we met two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we just like had this spark between us and have so much common ground and the conversations we have are just so rich that we don't want them to ever end. So we want to keep them going here, basically. Yeah, Transfer that's great. Venue. Mm, that's great. And um, yeah, I, I think what we really wanted to just uh, get this sort of show party started was was to just really encourage you to, to participate, give us some hearts, give us some likes, tag a friend. Um, and let us know, you know, what what is current, what's going on in your life, what is, um, you know, what are some of the things that you you are wanting clarity on that perhaps we can support you in, and um, also what are the animals asking of us? And and as we are asking on the bottom of this little funny thing that's going along, is we've just we've just um, had uh, Earth Day come up. And my question has really been how can how can we contribute more to the earth? How can we be of more service? And probably the simplest answer that I keep getting from the animals is to just be myself, to just show up that it's not about doing or being, but just just to just to show up and um, and do what you do. 
in life, which is to live from authenticity and vulnerability and, and to ask lots of questions. So, so yeah, do you have anything to add to that, Cara? I think that's it. I mean, that's really the heart of why we're here. We're here to be ourselves. Mm. And when we aren't being ourselves, then things aren't happening. And with all the things that are happening on our planet today in terms of politics and environment and, um, you know, all kinds of just crazy stuff um, from from the smallest scale to the biggest scale. Right. There's there's imbalance, I think, in our world on every level right now. And if we're not really fully in ourselves, then we're not fully responding to what's going on. And when we respond is when we can take make changes. When we take action, we can make changes. But so many of us, you know, and, and, and not, you know, not like you guys out there, but like often we find ourselves like, oh, I'm not going to say anything or somebody else is going to take charge on this. And I think what goes along with what you're saying, Sarah Jane, is that when we become ourselves and we feel free to express who we are, then we speak up in those situations. Then we say no thanks to the plastic bottle of something, or we, you know, bring our own shopping bag, or we help somebody we see on the street. And that's what changes the world. And that's what I think our planet is asking of us right now. Yeah, absolutely. And and I love that. Before I love that Sue Sue Zink is saying my cat, whenever she's awake, is very active and busy. She knocks over everything in our house, and my husband and I are so frustrated. I think she's teaching us to lighten up, but we're terribly frustrated with her behavior. How can I best help? How can I best help? Um, my two cents on that, Sue, and thank you for asking the question, is I once had a great dane. Oh, not a great dane. I had a I had a client that came to me with a cat. And she said something very similar, which was that this cat was really being clumsy. She wasn't being this feline, graceful energy of a cat that she was supposed to be. And she'd try and, you know, jump on the curtains and she'd fall off them and break things. And and the first thing that I like to ask when I'm working with animals is, is there an entity attached? And when we asked this cat what was going on with her, I got this huge surprise that there was a Great Dane trapped in, a, in her cat's body. So when we removed the entity of the Great Dane, she became all feline and agile and, and careful again. So, um, you know, that, that was really funny, but it was also just such a, an awareness for us that sometimes I see this so often with people that'll say, oh, you know what, I want to come back as the Queen's Corgi in my next life. And I say, be careful what you wish for, because, <laughs> because um, you know, if there are other entities in, in, in our bodies, we are not the one that's in charge. We're not the one that's actually uh, making the decisions. And it happens with cats and dogs too, you know, it's just like, the best way to do that is, is I would say, Sue, check, ask your cat if there's some, someone else, something else in her body. And, and, and if they'd like to leave, you know, with that great day, and we, we, we kind of said to him, well, you know, go find a great day that's about to give birth and go jump into one of those bodies. Because remember, we're all entities and we're all here to experience life and physical form. And um, just a side note on that, I was like really surprised because of all the work that I'd done with animal communications in the past. I'd never thought that animals cross species. I don't know if you if you've had any awareness on that, um, Cara, but I didn't know animals cross species. I thought dogs stayed dogs and lions stayed lions. But you know, this 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 experience with this cat really opened my eyes to to have a wider um, perspective that that anything is possible. And sometimes we make mistakes and jump into the wrong body. So I've had uh, horses too in the past. I had one horse that had a really strange um, form on her neck and um, again there was an emu trapped in this horse's body so once we removed the the, the entity of the emu the, the the horse's neck straightened out so no amount of chiropractic or anything was helping and it's really you know I think what I love about doing this work as I know you do Cara is the animals are constantly teaching us about you know just how small we actually do think and how easy it is for us to get trapped in the conclusional reality rather than looking at, okay, what else is possible and what's going on here? 
So that's my two cents of that, Sue. I hope that, <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Cara? Um, well, I have I have two things that strike me about Sue's comment. And the first, sorry, I have a thing that keeps popping up on my screen. Um, the, the first is to follow up on what you said, is I look at the five levels of our being all the time, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. And it's like, you know, in that case, the physical wasn't helping. Then is there a spiritual cause? Is there an energetic cause? What's the emotions that are going on? So always looking at all five aspects of our being, I think, is a really great place to start. But also, Sue, you talk about, you know, you say, I think she's teaching us to lighten up. And <laughs> and I want you to just take a moment and sit with that and, and really ask yourself, like, why do you think that? Where do you need to lighten up in your life? And what would be possible if you did lighten up about this situation? How would you approach it differently? Maybe you think of, you know, a great, really simple solution of, you um, I don't know, taking your cats for walks or some kind of a toy or setting up something else where she can have that same activity without breaking stuff. Because <laughs> we don't want to break stuff. But I really trust that if you feel like there's a lesson about light lightening up in there, that there probably is. And to take a moment to just go a little deeper in that, what is your intuition telling you about that? And and if you lean into it, how does it feel? And then what 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 comes from that? But to me, that first step is trusting your intuition and just leaning into it a little bit more. Yeah, I love that you added that because absolutely we have to look at all five levels and we're body mind spirit heart we're all of it and um if you're asking the question i would definitely say lean into trust on that as Kara said because oftentimes we do take ourselves so seriously and um that's just a great awareness to actually be able to receive the information without labeling it as a bad behavior or anything else but just to say i i often say in my animal communication sessions i always say could you just help me here you know i'm a little slow as a human <laughs> could you just, could you show me more of what what you're asking for and and they're always so so eager and generous with their with their replies and um you know i also think that you know if we ever sort of get stuck on something it's because oftentimes we have a truth with a lie attached so the question of you know what does trust have to do with anything is really looking at the difference between truth and what's true you know for me a truth is somebody's fixed point of view about what they think is right and they wanted to often to deliver it to us animals are not like that but i find that humans really function from that po point of view so i always like to ask you know what part of this is is the truth because what's true for me doesn't necessarily have to be true for you and what part of it is a lie so oftentimes when we're speaking there's an unspoken element to it where we we feel that we pick up on on other people's energy because our first line of, of communication is energy and oftentimes it'll feel light at the beginning and then it kind of gets heavy at the end and and if you really sort of take time to just push pause and 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 slow it down you'll see that there's some truth to it even when you read stuff you know this is a really good way of staying in your truth um, which is why we called this truth palm tuesdays because we want to look at you know what is true um, for you, what 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 do you care about? What moves and motivates you? And really returning to that part of trust, where where you can trust yourself above anything else. You know your animals better than anybody else. And you know one of the universal laws um, for me is that what we think is truth is generally the truth. So I always like to to add truth before I ask someone a question, either out loud or in my head, because then you'll pick out what is true for you and what is a lie. So that's just another fun tip <laughs> that I like to use um, to really look at, you know, if it's light, it's true. If it's heavy, it's a lie. And and following through, you know, following your body's impulse, following what your cat or your dog is trying to teach you. So, um, so yeah, any other questions coming in? I'm just checking this feed. This is quite fun, this, that we can see the comments on the bottom. Um, I can't see them, Sarah Jane. I'm glad you're reading them because I can't see them. 
Oh, yeah. can you not see it on the bottom of the screen? Mm -mm. It's like a red. Oh, okay. So can you see that? When you do that, yeah, it shows up like above your face Yeah. on my screen. Okay. So... All right. Well, we'll we'll iron out the chinks of all of this, but um, no other comments. So, if you are re are going to listen to this on the replay, just leave your comments, and and Cara and I will be sure to answer them as best as we can, and be sure to join us um, next Tuesday at the same time. Yeah. So just twenty minute little sound bites of of love and and connection for you to really ask us anything. Um, and also to contribute what you know about, about all of this because together we we grow um, and it's so much more fun, isn't it? It's way better to do it together than on our own. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So anything else you'd like to say? I'm playing with the buttons here. This is fun. I can see that. I get these little notifications that you're changing things. Mm. I don't see anything changing at my end, so yeah hope it's all good yeah so so just in closing because we we really want to keep these to 20 minutes what else would you like to to say about earth day or how we can perhaps contribute to the mm -hmm. earth because i know this is a big topic cara right now where people are really thinking that that what they are doing and how they are showing up isn't enough so what would you say to somebody that that's kind of doubting that their contribution is enough Oh, so um, last year in the Animal Wisdom Circle, I talked to a manatee in Florida, and she had the best advice because this question came up there, and um, and she was you know pretty strongly um, upset about global climate change, and you know so we asked her what can we do, and her answer was amazing, and it's perfect for the question you're asking. Whenever you're faced with an option, choose the simplest choice. Mm. So if you're faced with, you know, buying vegetables in the grocery store and you could get the packaged ones that are, in, you know, like a little styrofoam plate and cellophane on top and stickers and blah, blah, blah. Or you could just grab a couple and not even put them in a bag, but just put them in your shopping cart. Mm. Choose that. And that's been one of my guiding principles for a long time, because there's always something that I can do in every situation whenever I'm faced with that choice. Choose the simplest option. So that's what I that's my closer, Sarah Jane. <laughs> oh, I love that. And, and I'm so glad you brought that up because I was I was really I've been seeing a lot of very disturbing images on Facebook and social media about just how much plastic is, is landing up in the oceans. And and also on the good note, actually seeing that, you know, these are these are what these Truth Bomb Tuesdays are about is how can we make small changes that are going to create big impact? And it comes down to buying local, um, buying things that are in season and saying no to your local local grocers and stores that you don't want all the plastic. I'm horrified by the amount of, of plastic waste that that accumulates within yeah. a week of, of my life. And. Um, you know, unless we actually speak out and start saying, no, we're not going to support you um, and, and support your local farmers market or support your local people where we're eliminating the greenhouse gases by 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 vegetables and fruit being flown on in from all over the world. We do get to make a difference. So, you know, your voice does count. And as as Manatee so beautifully told us, um, you know, that, that it starts with small actions. Um, to have great change and and also start start up drives in your community. I have a the Crocodile River running through my um, where I live, and every weekend the community gets together and we go and we clean up the banks of the river and take out all, all the plastics. So, don't let anybody ever think that that your small choices are not making a difference because they add up to big change. And um, yeah, yeah, on yeah. that note. Um, that's our first 20 minute Tuesday. Um, let we us know if you it. like them. Yay. We did it. We sorted technology out. And um, just remember that the power of choice is yours and you get to choose uh, to create a bigger, better life for you, for the animals, for the planet, just by showing up and, and speaking your truth. So stay in your truth, shine your light and know that we appreciate you. 
and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.